Good morning. Welcome to First Christian Reformed Church this December 26th day. This is a, a special day in the life of our church. We celebrate God's grace with a, a children's program this morning. There's something special about little ones celebrating uh, this special time of year. If you're uh, joining us online, we welcome you and we pray that uh, you'll be blessed as we worship the Lord together. Uh, let's open our time of worship today with a prayer. Our Heavenly Father, at Christmas, your son Jesus was born to Joseph and Mary as a little baby. We're reminded that in him we are each, whether young or whether we are old, your children. Through the incarnation, the word was made flesh, and light has entered the world to overcome darkness. Bless our time of worship this morning, and lead us in your light. In Christ we pray. Amen. There's a, a special litany I'd like to use at this time. It's in the bulletins. And uh, uh, let's do that at this time. Good Christian friends, rejoice. The Lord has come in love and power, grace and truth, offering hope and peace. This promised one, mighty though small, is our hope, our strength, and our life. In hope, let us worship God. Alleluia. Our opening hymn is number 81, and we'll sing verses 1 and 2, 4 and 5. It's angels from the realms of glory come and worship Christ the King. up the newborn king this morning and let's receive the greeting that comes from the triune God. Grace, peace from God. God is our Father in Christ, our Savior and Lord, the one born in Bethlehem and through the working of God and his Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us greet each other in the spirit of Christian love. 
Good morning, Wesley. You're doing good. Good morning, Logan. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning, Jake. Good morning, Megan. This morning, we continue our celebration of Jesus' birth with the help of our Sunday school children. Our Christmas program is called Christmas Back to the Basics. And so let's start at the very beginning with the letter A. The angel Gabriel began the story by telling Mary, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. You'll conceive and give birth to a son, and you're to call him Jesus. He'll be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Bethlehem. That's where our story takes place. People traveled far and wide to get to Bethlehem, which was not a very big village. See is for census. Census is an official counting of all the people. The census was the reason so many people came to Bethlehem on that first Christmas night. D is for donkey. Yes, that is right. Shall we go get the donkey there? There's one over there. Let's find it. Shall we find the donkey? Look at that. You want to just have to pull it up just like that. Oh. Whew. Just about lost near. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A donkey carried the family on their very long journey. Mary and Joseph had to travel, oh, about 107 miles along the Jordan River to get from Nazareth to Bethlehem. That's a long ways. It's like traveling from here all the way to Iowa City, but with no car. Exhausted. Yes. Exhausted. That's another word for really tired. That's how everyone must have felt when they arrived. It'd take about 36 hours of walking to go that far. That's three days in a row of doing nothing but walking all day and sleeping at night. Finally, Mary and Joseph got to Bethlehem and they were exhausted. 
And so let's sing, and it's number 88, verse 1 and 4, O Little Town of Bethlehem. for families. Mary and Joseph and their new baby Jesus were a family. One that would bless the whole world. Luke 2, 6 to 8 says, While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there wasn't any guest room available for them. Yes, G is for good news. The good news was about to be shared with all the earth. Luke 2, 10 to 14 says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He's the Messiah, the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven. And on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. And now we'll uh, sing along with the angels. Angels, we have heard on high. It's number 82, verses 1 to 3, and let's stand to sing.
I ask for help. Yes, good. Hope. When the angels left, the shepherds had hope that they would find the baby, just as they had been told. And they did. The good news of a baby's birth given so long ago is God's gift of hope for the world. Hope is knowing that good news is coming, even when things are sad or hard. Jesus is the one who gives us hope because God loved us enough to send Jesus here to earth on that very first Christmas. Eyes for imagination. If we close our eyes and imagine the scene, we can almost see it. It's like we're remembering it, even though it didn't happen to us that very first Christmas. But the story is now ours to imagine and to tell. There's a song about going and telling. Let's sing it. Okay, you guys can come forward and we get to sing. Jacob. <laughs> and there is joy in Jacob's heart today. Joy is a kind of happiness, and it comes from God. Joy is unstoppable because it's a gift from God, a gift like Jesus, one that can never be taken away from us. The birth of Jesus gives us joy because of God's great love for us. And we all get to sing joy to the world. And we can remain seated. It's 92 verses 1 to 4.
is for king. Yes, king. Jesus was born to be our king. But he is not the kind of king people were used to. Most kings are born in palaces and surrounded by servants. Jesus was different. Instead of being born in a palace with servants and lots of money, he was born in a stable, surrounded by dirty, smelly animals and shepherds. Most kings rule with power and even fear. Jesus rules with mercy and love. And you guys get to sing a song right now, and it's called, Come On, Ring Those Bells. is the reason that God created the story for us. John 3, verses 16 and 17 says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, and whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God didn't send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Do you want to say it? Good. For God so loved the world that his one and only Son to save us whoever believes in him will live forever. All right. manger is usually used to hold food for animals, but on that first Christmas, the manger held baby Jesus because he had no other place to sleep. And that's where the shepherds found him. Luke 2, verses 16 to 18 says, So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. And now you guys get to sing a song away in the manger. White manger.
is for Nolan and State Nicholas. St. Nicholas was a Christian from a long, long time ago, and he helped teach the story of Jesus. He was kind to many people, especially children. He has inspired many people through the years to tell the story of Jesus and to be kind and generous and give gifts to others. Rumor has it he's even the one who inspired the story and work of Santa Claus. O is for offering. The wise kings who arrived later in the story brought gifts to the baby. And we can give gifts to God every day. We give our time, our talents, and our treasure to God and pray as a church. We use these resources like St. Nicholas to be kind and generous to others. So we share our gifts now and we want to make a difference all over the world. And uh, this morning's offering is for the Timothy Christian School, and the plates are in the front and the back, and we're welcome to give in support of Timothy Christian uh, as the Lord leads us. B is for Bisa Core. All right. We pray for peace in our lives and in our world. P is also for peace be with you, something we say to remember that we are forgiven. Jesus is our peace, and we pray to him. And we get to sing as a congregation now the song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. quiet. Now we begin a time of quiet and silent prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this special day. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. R 
is for refugees. Not long after the part of the story we tell today, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph had to run away to a different country so they could be safe. They were refugees. There are many people in our world today who are refugees. We want to be safe and healthy, who want a place to live, work, go to school, worship God. When we see pictures of them on the news, we remember that Jesus was a refugee once too. And uh, now um, Mildred, who isn't with us here in the sanctuary, is going to be reading a special poem called Refugees. In painful cold of the starless winter night came the refugees, slowly making their way to the border. The man, stooped from age or anxiety, hurried his small family through the wind. Bearded and dark, his skin rough and cracked from the cold, his frame loomed large in spite of the slumped shoulders. He looked like a man who could take care of whatever came at them from the dark. Unless, of course, there were too many of them. One man he could handle, two even, but a border patrol they wouldn't have a chance. His eyes, black and alert, darted from side to side, then over his shoulder and back again. Had they been seen? Had they been heard? Every rustle of the wind, every sigh from the child sent terror through his chest. Was this the way? Even the stars had been unkind and hidden themselves in the ink of night, so that the man could not read their way, only the wind. Was it enough? Only the wind and his innate sense of direction. What kind of cruel judgment that would be to wander in circles through the night, or to safely make their way to the border only to find the authorities waiting for them. He glanced at the young woman, his bride, no more than a child herself. She nuzzled the newborn, kissing his neck. She looked up, caught his eye, and smiled. Oh, how homelessness had taken its toll on her. Her eyes were red, her young face was lined, her lovely hair matted from inattention, her clothes stained from milk and baby, her hands chapped from the raw wind of winter. She hardly had time to recover from childbirth. When word had come, they were hunted, and they fled with only a little bread, the remaining wine, and a very small portion of cheese. Suddenly, the child began to make small noises. The man drew in his breath sharply. The woman quietly put the child to breast. Fear, long, dread-filled moments huddled. The family stood still in the long silence. At last, the man breathed deeply again, reassured they had not been heard, and into the night continued Mary, Joseph, is for star. One special star guided the wise men to come see the baby. They were mysterious. They lived far away. But they brought gifts to Jesus because they knew that he would grow up to be king. 
king. Matthew 2 tells us the wise men traveled following the star until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Star. Yes. Treasure box. T is for treasure. Yes, good job. Jesus' mother Mary had many exciting, confusing, wonderful things happen to her as she obeyed God. The Bible tells us that she treasured them in her heart. That means she realized how wonderful her baby was. And she was glad. She thanked God. You can go back now if you want. You is for unspectable. Yes. All right. Unspectable is a big word for surprise. Many things that happened when Jesus was born, that it wasn't in a palace, that angels came and sang, and important people like kings and seemingly unimportant people like shepherds all came to worship him. All these things were surprising. Even though it was unexpected to us, it was all the way God planned. And our song that we'll sing together is a congregation. It's number 95. Let's stand and sing the three stanzas what child is this?
very, very vulnerable. All right. Vulnerable means able to be hurt. Every baby is vulnerable, and so are we when we love one another. Even though Jesus is God, he became vulnerable when he was born, and we are called to be vulnerable when we love others. This means that we can watch Jesus' example, being careful with one another, always kind and loving. W is for Wesley and World. The good news of Jesus, the story we are telling today, is a story that is meant for the whole world to hear. When Jesus was much older, he told people, go out into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. X is for Christ. Good. X is the Greek letter chi, the first letter in the word Christ. Jesus is called the Christ because he's the one who saves us from our sins. You, you who are here, you who are a long ways off, Jesus came into the world for you. Z is for zeal. Zeal is passion and excitement. Zeal is joy and hope and love and peace. Zeal is commitment and wanting to do what God wants you to do. Isaiah 9 tells us it is God's zeal that makes this story happen. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders. And he'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from this time on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And... As we have done in the past, and we're bringing our Christmas uh, children's program to a close, there are some um, special gift bags, uh, goodie bags this year. And uh, during the closing song, near the end of the song, we'll lead our children forward, our children back to get their bags. But I just uh, want to make sure everybody knows you're welcome to take one as well, because there's 50 of them, and we prefer not to have leftovers. (laughs) But let us stand and we'll receive God's blessing and then we'll sing our closing hymn. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his face to you and grant you his peace. Amen. And our closing hymn is 87, 1 to 5, Once in Royal David's City.